I mean, that's the thing. I mean, people get very sensitive about their information and privacy and Facebook, but that having your money, which is another form of free speech, right? Is that the yes, way you talk about it money? It is, absolutely. It is a form which, of speech. Can you explain that to people? Well, money is a language. You know, if you, if you look at it from a very raw perspective, uh, money doesn't have value, right? And this is an important thing that most people don't immediately understand is that money itself doesn't have value. Money is, is a vector for transmitting value. It's how you express value. But the value isn't in the money. It's in the product or service you bought with it. And it's in the labor you gave in order to acquire it in the first place. That's where the value comes from. There's nothing intrinsically valuable in the money. Some forms of money in the past had intrinsic value with gold and things like that because that was the best way to establish it in the beginning. But money doesn't need to have value. In fact, it gets a bit in the way. What you want money to do is communicate value and it allows us as a society to coordinate markets and behaviors by saying, this is important to me and I'm going to express that to you by giving you three tokens of appreciation that I had to work for and the, the time cost of money is one of the most important characteristics. You know, we value money, most people value money based on how many hours of personal labor and effort it takes to acquire it. That's why at some point it becomes funny money when you, you, you can acquire it trivially and you don't work anymore for it. Right. But other than that, in most social environments, money is the way we express things. So if you look at it, what is it? It's an abstract symbol, symbolic, right? And that symbol is used to express something and to assign a, me a measure of value to it. So it has semantic value, it has meaning. Um, so abstract symbols that have meaning that people exchange with each other, we call language. That's what it is. Hmm. It's a peculiar language. It's not a general purpose language like English. But then again, neither is C++ that we use in programming or PHP or HTML. That doesn't make it any less of a language, it just makes it a language of narrow scope and applicability. Money is a language of extremely narrow scope and applicability, but enormous power, because what it expresses is value, especially the value of human time, which is extremely valued, valuable to people, and therefore it allows societies to coordinate on what they communally decide is valuable by aggregating the information of every individual decision you make as to is this worth enough of the time value I've put into work today? Do I want it enough? Do I value it enough? And if you do, you send a signal that other people also coordinate with that sets prices that allows us to say, okay, we need more of this good because that good is important because people are buying it. Okay. So it's a coordination mechanism. And once you realize that, you realize that it has a, a few characteristics that are really important. First of all, because it's a language that helps society coordinate the allocation of resources, many of your freedoms depend directly on your ability to express that language. Um, controlling that language is enormously powerful. If you can control the flows of money, you can control a lot of social activities as well as expression of personal values. Which is what the central bank and Which the is the censorship do. and, and the right. surveillance capitalism angle of this. And um, also, if you free it completely, um, then it, it gives a, a, a degree of personal liberty that is enormous. Then you can look at it from a technical perspective and say, well, if it's just the language, oh, we can make it entirely digital. It doesn't need to have physical form. We can communicate it instantaneously to any, to any part of the planet. Um, borders are meaningless. Um, race, religion, nationality, gender, you know, none of these other social c constructs are meaningful in the context of that language. So true neutrality means anyone or anything to anyone or anything. You don't even need to be human to engage in the activities of money. Software agents can do it, which is unique to Bitcoin uh, and other open public blockchains is that until now, only humans or associations of humans have allowed to have ownership of assets under law. And now, in fact, perhaps not in law, but in fact, software agents can independently own money without any human supervision, which is another 
mind-blowing thing that we haven't considered the implications. Does that mean AI could create companies in the future to yes, satisfy absolutely. human demand? We can already create autonomous companies that operate without human supervision. That's They're pretty. called decentralized autonomous organizations or DAOs. And that's actually one of the really interesting applications that comes out of Ethereum, uh, which is another open public blockchain. Ethereum is not about payments. It's about governance and running software that acts autonomously. So you could have a corporation that has plenty of shareholders, but no bosses, or plenty of employees, but no bosses, or no employees, no shareholders, and no bosses, and operates on itself. One of the little mental things I, I like to throw out, like a mimetic idea, is what happens when you combine um, ride-hailing services with autonomous vehicles with decentralized autonomous organizations and cryptocurrencies. You could have a self-owning, self-driving taxi, which is a taxi that by coincidence, by accident, or deliberately became emancipated. It's a taxi that owns itself, that drives itself, that owns and charges money from its customers and pays for its own electricity, maintenance, gas, or whatever, uh, that doesn't have a human owner at all. It might even have shareholders or not. Um, and the, the it's people, just out there existing as this right, entity right, that survives in this world and right. makes a net profit, obviously, somehow. That's not belongs, that doesn't belong to anyone. Yeah. That's, and and Which people is the most like, efficient how could that possibly happen? Right. And the best kind of idea of that, which is almost like a little sci-fi story is, well, it was owned by a person, and that person died without a will or any heirs, and no one noticed because the taxi continued to work. And so it became emancipated because it became an asset that's intestate, it's not being inherited by anyone. And no one seized it or stopped it from operating. So the morning after its owner died, the garage door opened and it went out on its taxi rounds autonomously without noticing that anything changed because of that. So you can actually see scenarios where this happened. It, this is based, I read this article about, they have this phenomenon in Japan where old people die in their apartments and they're not discovered for two or three years because all of their banking is automated, the, the air conditioning is on, their, their um, pension check keeps arriving in their bank, it pays the rent, it pays the electricity, and nobody notices they're dead because there's no one around to notice. They don't have any heirs or relatives. And now imagine if that person owned an autonomous taxi business and died. <laughs> it can happen. Just keep going, almost like the emancipation of slavery, right? Like, you know. Well, no, but there's Over. no agency here. Right. There's no agency. Um, and to some people, this is a scary future. And of course, you know, whenever you, you come up with these crazy sci-fi ideas, you can make a Black Mirror episode out of it, and you can look at all the dark sides of this. You know, a lot of people would think about autonomous organizations that do malice. But I like to think of it in terms of what about building a decentralized altruistic organization like a decentralized charity? A charity that collects charitable giving donations in cryptocurrency, and then in response to activities that happen in the world. For example, noticing keywords about earthquakes or tsunamis in particular regions, right? Then distributes these charitable donations directly to people who are in that country, perhaps by saying, show me a geolocation on your phone that proves you are currently in the disaster zone, and I will send you a small amount to help you out. And then you'd have 100% of all donations go directly to charitable uses, zero operating costs, zero people in the middle to take advantage, complete transparency, open books, and you could have an autonomous charity with no humans involved. Bizarre, I know, but this is within our future. <laughs>